Well, with this unit, we begin our formal introduction to cells. What do we have here? We have a diagram of a generic animal cell. And so, first of all, what is a cell? Well, the textbook describes a cell as life's fundamental unit. What does that mean? Well, that means unless you have a cell, you don't have life. And so by this definition, which is I plan to use, by the way, by this definition, is the nucleus of a cell alive? And the answer would have to be what? It'd have to be no. The nucleus isn't alive. It's only part of a cell. It's the cell itself that is alive. Not the mitochondria, not the nucleus, not any of these other structures in here. The cell itself is the fundamental unit of life. And so, would we ever say then that a protein molecule is alive? This represents a big old enzyme molecule, and that's its what? Its substrate. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> now, that's a big old complex molecule this enzyme is. Is it alive? I don't know. Is it a cell? Not even close to a cell. A cell's got a bazillion protein molecules inside, and, uh, and so no, a molecule's not alive. Now, can molecules die? Can this, can this enzyme molecule die? Well, of course not. It's not alive, but it can come apart. What's that word again? The D word? Yeah, it's, uh, it becomes denatured. And so we say enzymes are denatured. And the cell that the enzymes are in, the cell that they might be killed or die if the enzymes are denatured. So cells can be killed. Enzymes are denatured. What about this little guy? It looks like a green rocket ship. It represents a virus a virus. You say, well, it looks pretty fancy. That must be alive. It's even got some DNA, right? And here's a picture down here, of, uh, taken with an electron microscope, of a virus, of this particular virus. And so, is it alive? <clears throat> well, the question is, is it a cell? Is it more than a cell, less than a cell, a cell? What is it? Well, it's a whole lot less. Viruses are a whole lot less than cells. And so, by the definition of a cell being life's fundamental unit. This guy may look pretty fancy, but he's not alive. He does not fit the definition uh, of life, and that is in order to have life, you got to have what? You've got to have a cell. Now, uh, you and I, are we made of cells? Yeah, a whole bunch of them. Uh, we'll get a number here after a while, a magic number, but the simplest organisms are made of how many cells? Well, here's some simple little guys. How many cells big are they? They are one cell big. And so what's this dark area inside these little swimming guys? I guess that would be the nucleus. Is the nucleus alive? Of course not. You know that. <clears throat> what's actually alive? The whole cell is alive. The whole cell, not the parts of a cell. And so the cell itself is alive. Here's another single cell. Well, several. Each one of these is one cell. Pretty fancy, huh? But it's one cell big. Single celled organisms. Finally, here's a single celled organism, and it's got its nucleus, and uh, but it is uh, a single cell. It's kind of kind of interesting the way it looks, the way the form it takes. But it's one cell big. If the cell is alive, the parts of a cell like this nucleus aren't alive. By our definition, it's the entire cell is the simplest thing that is alive. And so let's go back to our original uh, diagram. We see lots of items inside this cell. Are we going to learn about them all? Oh, no, 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 no. We don't have time. <clears throat> and uh, some courses you may take time uh, to uh, study into all parts of a cell, but uh, we'll study a few of them. And uh, let's, uh, let's kind of name off some that we're going to be looking at. Of course, the nucleus, we'll be looking at that. Mitochondria, we'll mention those. Uh, what's this thing around the outside? Let's see, where is that label? There it is over there. The plasma membrane. Well, that, you know, that may uh, not do too much for you right now, but we've already talked about the cell's membranes. We said all these surfaces and boundaries inside a cell and around the outside of the cell are what structure? They are a what? A phospholipid bilayer. A phospholipid bilayer in plasma kind of indicates that it is fluidy or flexible. You can walk up to a cell if you could shrink down, walk up to a cell that was uh, pretty big, 
um, uh, compared to you. You could push on that plasma membrane and it would probably oscillate kind of like the surface of a waterbed. Uh, speaking of the plasma membrane, let's look at an actual photograph of the plasma membrane. What do we say this it was? We said it was flexible. That looks pretty flexible, right? And we also said the uh, plasma membrane is composed of what primarily? The phospholipid bilayer. That is a layer, how many molecules thick? Two molecules thick. Oh my goodness, can you actually see two layers of molecules forming the phospholipid bilayer? Well, I think you can. And you say, wow, can you, a microscope can actually take pictures of, of molecules? Well, sure. Not the kind of microscope uh, we have in our biology lab, but something called an electron microscope. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have something over here called a magnification bar. And the length of this bar, it represents this, this length, this, this distance, 0.1 micrometers. Now you may not be familiar with micrometers, you may be familiar with meters, that's about a yard and centimeters and millimeters, but what's a micrometer? A micrometer is one millionth of a meter. And so, uh, actually does this line represent one millionth of a meter? No, it represents one ten millionth, uh, one tenth, excuse me, one tenth of one millionth of a meter, or one ten millionth of a meter. Whew, pretty small, pretty pretty small little distance there and what about this phospholipid bilayer is it the same length as this bar the same uh, same distance across this as this no probably about 10 of those that fit across here right so the phospholipid bilayer whew, boy it is pretty thin it's about one tenth of what we see here or one one hundred millionth of a meter thick very very thin Here's another picture of the phospholipid bilayer, a photograph. It was an electron. This is actually two different cells. Here's one cell here. Here's one cell over here. And this is the plasma membrane of each cell. As you look at this diagram, can you see the phospholipid bilayer in each one, the two layers of molecules in each one of these plasma membranes? Well, sure you can. Absolutely. So, uh, what do we have here? Wow, we have cheek cells. We saw those in an earlier lesson. And uh, what is one characteristic of the phospholipid bilayer? The plasma membrane that's formed by the phospholipid bilayer, it is flexible. And so these cells don't all have the same shape. They, uh, they kind of look like fried eggs. And why is that? Because the plasma membrane made by this phospholipid bilayer is flexible. It is fluidy. Uh, here's some more. They just kind of, kind of look like fried eggs. Kind of, kind of a flexible, fluidy boundary. Here's one by itself. Uh, now, that is very different. That is very different from a plant cell. A plant cells look more like boxes, and why is that? Because of this rigid outer what cell wall. We also see something different we didn't see before, and that is chloroplast. Do all plant cells have chloroplasts? <clears throat> Do root cells have chloroplasts? No, they don't. Uh, not much light down there under the ground uh, for the chloroplasts to work with, but uh, some plant cells have chloroplasts usually, and those would be mostly in the leaf cells, the green cells. And so we see a lot of the same things we saw in the other picture, but the things that are different, cell wall chloroplasts. And uh, so this makes... Uh, makes plant cells look a little different under a microscope than an animal cell. The cells we're just looking at, those cheek cells, look like fried eggs. Look at some plant cells under a microscope, they look more like boxes. Why is that? Because of that rigid cell wall. You see kind of a nucleus kind of faintly right there, another nucleus right there. And uh, these are onion cells, cells from, uh, from onion. And uh, here's some cells that look quite a bit different, but here we have the cell wall. Here we have the cell wall, uh, and inside the, each of these cells are a lot of little green things. What are those little green things? Well, they are chloroplasts. They certainly are. And so, uh, and so, uh, uh, we uh, will now return to a lesson, a lesson material, and um, and learn something more about these cells.